Hello and welcome to the Robbie Coker Show. I'm David Holt and Coach Coker is here this morning with just a few hours of sleep. No doubt, man. It's that time of year. <laughs> uh, everybody's scrunching around to find tape your next opponent. Uh, helping friends, trying to call some friends. Uh, no doubt made for a late night last night, but we're certainly glad to be one of the 16 teams in 3A still playing. Well, exactly. And before we start talking about that, I've got my phone today. So uh, <laughs> um, I took a picture of something I thought we might want to talk about today. There's this, uh, I don't know, 150 <laughs> wins, and there's this blue coat little guy it's, here it's looking. A, it's a great jacket, isn't it? <laughs> It is a pretty cool jacket. <laughs> Not many people can pull it off, the blue plaid. I mean, you know, Wimp Sanderson was one of my heroes, so. <laughs> but I'm, I'm li have you really been here six years? It's crazy, in the man? Uh, Where is time going? I mean, just poof. I, I wish it was a before and after picture. So <laughs> I wish it was a picture six years ago. I think I came to play as a young man. Uh, no question, man. Uh, uh, our social media team kind of shocked me with that. Uh, I didn't even realize that that, that that number had been achieved. You know, obviously, uh, a lot of great players have came through here, some guys that are real dudes uh, that really want to be good at basketball and, and their unselfishness and their dedication and, and uh, their teamwork is certainly uh, the reason that happened. We've had a lot of great parents come through the program, great administration. Obviously, we got the best, I think, the best coaching staff in America. And there's so many people behind the scenes that, that have played such a part in, in our program and have achieved 150 wins in six years. Obviously, that's a, that's a pretty good number for six years of basketball. It's a and, great number for six years in basketball. And there's just so many people that, that I hope uh, have enjoyed the ride and that have been such a vital part to the organization and being able to be that successful. Well, uh, and that's the thing I think a lot of people may not realize. It's a lot of work. A lot of dedication, a lot of work, a lot of buy-in from the kids, the community, the school system, um, and the players. I mean, it's just uh, we have a great crowd every night. Uh, I just couldn't let today go by without uh, saying congratulations, 150 wins. And I tell you, I, I call his wife many crowns because she's getting <laughs> many crowns in her crown in heaven living with this guy. There's no doubt. Her, her robe's going to be extremely long. <laughs> I... Uh, you know, uh, you're going you're gonna to get me on a tangent here. Uh, Uh-oh. You know, Imagine I'll, that. Robbie Coker on a I, tangent. I always say, you know, it, it, they say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a community to build a program. And uh, when I think about the people uh, in this community, how good they've been to my family and myself and, and our program, man, uh, it's been a very a very special collective effort. And uh, I hope everybody's had as much fun as I have. And uh, we look forward to this thing. Keep on rolling on. We've, we've got great players. Uh, still playing, wearing navy and white, and got some great players coming up as well. So it's a, it's a fun time to be a Bear. It is a fun time. And let's back up. We did, weren't able to bring a show last week, but we were in the middle of the county, I mean the area tournament last week. Had two games over at the Coliseum on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday night. Tuesday, Thursday, yes, right. Tuesday night we played uh, Geraldine. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that game? Yeah, it seems like it's been a month ago. Man. It does. We played does. three games. We got another one coming up. Yeah, I thought our guys. You know, everybody talks about postseason basketball. It's a seven-game tournament, uh, and the only advantage you can give yourself is to host the tournament, and then to host that sub-region game, you get to host the first. If you take your business, you get to host the first three games at home. And I thought our guys did a great job of keeping the main thing, the main thing. You know, I'm a big Elko guy and uh, not letting the outside noise affect us. So many people outside our locker room want to talk about, well, who do you play this time, and what does the postseason look like, and, and all that. And I thought our guys have done a great job thus far of keeping the main thing the main thing. And, and as long as our approach is, 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 is on point, uh, this group's really hard to defend and puts a lot of pressure on, on the defensive end as well. And I felt like our guys' as approach really for all three of these games has been spot on. We've been locked in. Uh, not that we went through a bad lull, but you could tell uh, January's a hard time. Um, you play so many games and everybody's thinking about the future and you mm -hmm. know, a lot of things going on, Christmas time and all that. And I felt like once this postseason started, our guys have refocused and they've been locked in. And, and I really like our approach these first three games of postseason. So we were successful uh, beating, uh, defeating Geraldine's. We moved up and hosted Sylvania on Thursday night. I was out of town, but 
Uh, so proud to look on social media and see that we had won. We're able to host uh, this last night. So you want to talk a little bit about the Sylvania game? Yeah, once again, it goes back to our approach, and, and, and we really want to get out to a fast start. Um, Sylvania uh, had a great season. Obviously, they got beat last night at the buzzer at, at Piedmont. Had as good a team as they've had in probably seven, eight, ten years. Uh, Tyler's done a great job of building that program back. You know, it's, it's his alma mater. He takes pride in that program. Got the old legend Gary Talley on the bench. Uh, <laughs> had a good basketball team this year. Had a great year. And, and any time you play a team that third or fourth time, you get to worry about their mental state and your mental state. And, you know, how's it going to be? We really want to get to a fast start. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, Maybe as good a quarter as we've ever played. I think we was 38th in the first quarter. Really imposed our will on the defensive end. Was able to create a lot of easy uh, scoring opportunities. And then we were on a whole other level offensively. Man, we moved that ball. I don't think we took a bad shot in the first half. I mean, it was a text winner says ping. It was pinging. That ball was pinging around. Man, it was a it was a sight to see. Really, really locked in, making the next play, making the next pass, not letting the play before affect us. Getting to the next play. I mean. It was probably as good a half as we played maybe since uh, Oxford, uh, the second, third game of the year. Yeah. And then, because we were able to win the area, we were able to host the first game in the subregion. Well, yeah, subregion. Uh, Sites came to town last night. Uh, talk a little bit about that game. Yeah, you know, uh, we talk about approach and focus and whatnot. Sacks upset Weaver in the first round of the area tournament. Everybody thought it was a Weaver Piedmont final. Uh, and. Everybody knew that both of those guys were really good basketball teams. Sacks, traditional power, really good in uh, football and basketball. Coach Miller does both. Does a great job. I think he played for Larry again, and Alexander did both, so he kind of understands that. They had a deep running football. Uh, their basketball team wasn't as successful as we thought. Yeah, I think he had a couple issues. Uh, a couple guys got dismissed from the team, maybe. Got a young group, didn't have a senior on his team. And had only won five games going into the area tournament. And uh, Weaver had beaten them like 25 or 30 the, the last time they played. Uh, and it goes back to that focus and, and that approach. Uh, number 10 for Sachs hit seven or eight threes, and uh, they upset Weaver in the first round of the area tournament. Um, Which just goes to show you, uh, you got to be ready to play when the ball's tipped. That's, that's right. Each game takes a life of its own. We talk about you know, <laughs> people think you have to be the best team in the state to win the state championship. That's mm -hmm. not the case. You just got to be the best team on game day. Yeah. And reality is, you just got to be the, you know, you got to be better than one team on that game day, and then the next one, you know. Uh, so, uh, Sachs was a little dangerous, obviously, uh, make you nervous getting out at the right time. They played Alexandria close in the season. They played uh, Piedmont to the buzzer in the season. And uh, Piedmont was able to get them pretty good in the, in the area tournament on Saturday. But they're in the five-team area tournaments because their area is bigger. So they played Monday, Thursday, Saturday. So they took Sunday off, had money to prep play us Tuesday. So I thought that might complete our advantage as well. And I really thought our guys was locked in again, knowing the task at hand. Uh, you know, everybody wanted to talk about Jack State and the game time. Get, I've been asked 50 times what time we play on Monday, you know. <laughs> and our guys did a great job of blocking all that out, uh, keeping the main thing the main thing. And once again, our approach was really good. We got a hot early. Uh, the thing was rolling again. And when we play like that, when we're really focused and we're making that extra pass, uh, obviously very advantageous for us and, and we're, we're fun to watch. You know, uh, just a, uh, you know, really a great seven days of basketball we played uh, since last Tuesday. And, and now we're, uh, Right where we want to be, and 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 going to that, I think it's the fifth straight year we've been in the regional tournament. That is that right? That's crazy. Yeah, fifth straight year we've been in the regional tournament, and uh, these guys know what it's all about. And uh, hopefully, we can continue to be. Uh, our preparation's been really good. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, our prep's been really good. We've been going short time, but been really focused, and hope we can continue that thing going for another couple of weeks. Well, before we move on and talk about the game at Jacksonville State, let me ask you a question. Because sitting night after night watching your coach and keeping the clock, it's very seldom that you call a timeout. But last night you weren't very impressed with uh, some rebounding, and so it seemed like you called a quick 30-second. I'm like, Coker's calling a timeout? What's up with that? Yeah, man, it was. I made my mind up. I'm trying to think. He might have been. The Sylvania game, or it might have been drilled. I don't know. We we come out flat to start the third quarter, um, so I made my mind up that I wasn't gonna let us water through the second half. I didn't want to, you know, uh, 
of course, you say it all you want. You know, we talk about it at halftime, get back going, get back going, but they look up there to the score, too. And, mm -hmm. and they know they're coming out quick in the third, you know, so they sometimes tend to want to get a couple of shots up, you know, uh, not make the right play. And I just felt like we'd lost a little bit of intensity. We gave up about four offensive rebounds on two possessions to start the third. And I just, yeah. uh, I called timeout and strongly encouraged them to rebound the ball. And, Lock in, finish the Strongly game. Strongly encouraged. Yeah. That's that's a really good term. I'm impressed yeah. with that one. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm a walking thesaurus. So. <laughs> but, uh, so I thought it was really, you know, it's a paper business. It better be good. Yeah. You can only say drain so many times. Exactly. Make a three. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's a shout out to Paul Benefield at Five High School. Anyways. Well, I, uh, I was wondering if you strongly encourage them with some type of punishment of stadiums or no, something. No, I, I didn't have to do that. I mean, they're senior group, man. They, you know, what these guys have accomplished, those 150 wins, they've played in about 120 of them, you know. <laughs> Let's don't get it twisted. Yeah. It's a good group. They're, you know, they they're get good it. kids. They knew it. You know, they knew I was right. Uh, not let, or they at least let me act like I was the right. So, <laughs> pulled my wife, you know, didn't want to fight that fight, whatever. Yeah. So, did a great job. We kind of got focused there and, and, and finished the game. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be a sloppy game and us not, you know, take care of business. In reality, it was the last game that that group of seniors are going to play in the Cab County Schools Coliseum. I mean, you think about it. Uh, I wanted to finish it the right way. I wanted to, you know, take care of business, finish the game, let everybody else play, and let's move on. And I thought we got back focused there for two and a half, three minutes and did what we were supposed to do. And then I, I obviously are guys, and it's not even fair, and you guys know I don't believe in starters. Uh, I tell people all the time, there's no level of programs. There's only level of players, you know. Uh, that was Andy Kennedy, you know, he's, when we get to Ole Miss, everybody's talking about the difference in Ole Miss and Kentucky, and, you know, and he kept saying there's only a difference in players, you know. You gotta get better players, you gotta develop better players. Same thing in, in high school basketball. Uh, and you guys have seen it. You know, people talk about us playing six A's and seven A's. There's, there's no difference in levels. There's a difference in, you know, levels of teams. There's a difference in levels of players. Mm -hmm. And we've got real players. And, I wanted those guys to, to finish out that, you know, what a run they've had in that building. It is. Uh, if you think about their losses, I, uh, you know, it's always the losses you remember more. As freshmen, uh, they lost to section in that building on senior night. As sophomores, they lost to Gerald in that building in the county finals. As juniors, they lost to South Atlanta in that building. And as seniors, they lost to Iberville. Who got me by lead last night? The buzzer was up 39 to 30 with five to go. Number one team in six A. So their four losses are that section team went to the final four. That Geraldine team was top five in the state all year. We beat them one point in the sub region, and we went to the state championship game. South Atlanta was defending state champions. Got beat in the semifinals last year, and then this Arable team was you know top ten in six A all year. So their career and what they've accomplished in that building. Uh, I hope you know we ain't really got a lot of sentimental yet, but. It was the last time in that building. I wanted us to finish it out the right way, and, yeah. and, and fortunate we, we, we did what we were supposed to do. And just a great team win, and, and our guys off the bench, once again, uh, I don't like using that term, but uh, well, they've been playing really well. You know, we, we've really been, from 1 to 11, the last three weeks, we've really been locked in and playing really well. I call it just depth of players. You can call it bench, depth of players, whatever you want to say. But in this, let me ask this question, because I, I work with one of the, the parents uh, at my school, and. And she will say often, he's like, he's encouraging us to take care of yourself, uh, health-wise. Uh, it's called washing your hands, stay healthy, get some sleep. Hey, yeah, I mean, this time of year as a coach, you're so paranoid, you know. <laughs> but after playing one-on-one -on -one yesterday, you know, uh, you get, you know, you get freaked out. <laughs> Cole and Jathan, all them guys are trying to dunk the balls before the game last night, you know. I called them in two minutes early, like, why don't we, you know, get them in there, you know. <laughs> this time of year is a paranoid time of year for a coach. You just try to control what you can't control. Obviously, the flu is at an all-time high. Dane got sick last week. He luckily passed a negative for, for flu, but you can't wash your hands too many times. You can't, you know, I keep it on, but the only thing Kobe Tinker's scared of is a good night's sleep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't, I mean, I tell him all the time, let's get him to bed. Uh, yeah. Uh, drink lots of agua and Gatorade, you know, eat good meals, uh, take care of your bodies. This time of year, basketball's a grind, man. It's a three-month season. Mm -hmm. You've played 35 games or whatever. I mean, it's a grind. I've seen teams fade at the end because they hadn't taken care of their bodies or they were ready for it to be over or, you know, they get consumed with, you know, they, they, they can't finish it out strong. And we've been very fortunate the last three or four years to have teams that finish strong. 
Uh, and uh, I think it's, a, it's our parents doing a good job at home and our guys taking care of their bodies and, and knowing, once again, uh, the task at hand and keeping the main thing the main thing. I think it's as many cliches as you work in one <laughs> sentence as possible. I'm impressed with that. <laughs> so uh, Monday, we are out of school for President's Day? Yes, yeah. this is my favorite. This is, a, I like to call it a... Uh, Case study, you know, case education, study? you know, we do. Well, this this should be uh, interesting, but it's amazing how many people want Dr. Barnett to let us out of school. You know, well, we should get a day off to go to the, the region tournament. You know, it's amazing how many people want a day off for the region tournament. But when we have a day off, our crowd won't be near as big. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's just amazing. You know, last year I noticed that we played drilling on that Saturday last year. I mean, boy, our, our crowd went very good that Saturday now. Now, when we played Piedmont on that Tuesday or Wednesday, it was pretty good because we got out of school. But it's almost like, you know, we don't want to give up our own time to go, yeah. To yeah. go to the region tournament. Yeah, man, it's going to be Monday. It's going to be a great day of basketball. I think 5A plays. Edel Wall's the favorite in 5A. I don't think – Edel Wall's down there. a Rep's down there. Scottsboro and I assume Centerpoint. I think Centerpoint's the other one. I don't know how they match up. So you've seen Edel Wall. You've seen a Rep. You've seen Scottsboro play. Uh, uh so everybody knows that the 5A's before us, and then 3A's on Monday, uh, we're the afternoon. The 4.30 game's going to be Piedmont and Hansville. Uh, there'll be a girls game in between. I don't even know what time the Pizza girls play. Uh, the two girls game's supposed to be really good, too. Pizza girls in between us are at 6, and then we play at 7.30. So uh, be a great day of basketball at JSU. Obviously, I believe, maybe a little bias. You know, I do have two degrees from Jack State working on number three. I do believe it's the best regional tournament. Uh, I really like how they, what they've done in the gym. Uh, you know, it's not as easy to seat anymore. Uh, they've cut about you know eight, nine hundred seats out of that thing when they when they reconstructed the and gutted it and did the uh, upgrades. So it's a great atmosphere for basketball. Uh, everybody's got a cheer back now. Uh, other than the eight dollar pizzas and the four dollar cokes, you know, you can sit in there and watch a game all day. Uh, so I hope. I hope uh, the Plenty Bear Faithful shows up. And, and the game's at 7.30. 7.30. Monday night. Everybody can get off need, work, yeah. drive down to Gazin. You got time, turn left. They're going past Jack State, you hit Minus. You know, you can do that. Or you can go to Jack State and, you know, eat this. Everybody's two favorites, Jefferson's and Struts. You know the deal. I do. We'll go, we'll, we'll take the guys down on Friday. You see the atmosphere, we're going to go down. I think our plan right now is to go, what's the one thirty game, eat at three and then watch five play. Five second heart, it's going to be cool. Yes. And we play both teams. Uh, should be a good game. Uh, watching those guys play, uh, go down and enjoy. I think our guys deserve uh, a day to enjoy. You know, my favorite time of year as a as a kid growing up, dad being in the sports business, was the region tournament. You know, and uh, and then I recognize when you play in it, you don't really get to enjoy it because you're having to practice and prepare. You know, um, so I think it's always good for us. We try to take our guys down and let them enjoy a day. You know, let them rock well and they're playing your stuff on. Um, let them be a part of the region tournament experience. You know, it's high-level games, uh, fun times. Uh, they've earned that a little bit. Feed them good, bring them home, uh, and then we'll get back focused on uh, the task at hand. And tell their mamas to get them in the bed. <laughs> Try to get them in the bed. You know, take them cell phones away, man. <laughs> take those cell phones away. You don't have to send a snap out at 1 a.m. She'll be fine tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Uh, have you said that several times to some of your players? Several times, Dave. Right. Several times. I can imagine that. We hope that the Play Me Faith will come out on Monday night, 7.30, Jacksonville State University. Uh, love going down there, love uh, watching basketball. It's a great time to be a Play Me Bear. Uh, the guys have just continually progressed over the season. That's what you've been wanting. That's what you've talked about from the beginning. Their potential is there. How much are they going to improve? How much are they going to want this? Um, and so we are hoping that we get through this uh, couple of games and move uh, a little south to uh, Birmingham and be talking about how in the world to get into that place with, I can't imagine. with the interstate construction. Cause that's yeah, you, better be... go, you better go to Jack State because you can sure watch that game. I don't know if you're going to be able to get down to downtown Birmingham, no question. Yeah, downtown <laughs> Birmingham is a nightmare from what I'm hearing. So uh, that should be interesting. But we got to get there. That's right. You got to keep the task at hand one game at a time. You know, everybody's heard the cliches. The reason are cliches, though, is because it's true. You know, there's a reason they call it on. And, uh, our guys have been really good at focusing on the task at hand, making sure to keep the main thing the main thing. Today, uh, we'll go back, we'll watch our sacks tape, we'll get a couple shots up, um, and then we'll start prepping for uh, Fultondale uh, 
probably on Thursday. It gives us three days. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Give us four days. I probably spend Wednesday and Thursday the majority of the time working on plan view. You know, making sure uh, cleaning up anything we this tape reveals that we need to work on and whatnot. You talked about our guys progressing. That's a, that's as good a way to put it. This group has gotten better. Uh, we're better today than we were a month ago. We were better in December than we were in November. Uh, this group has done a great job of uh, learning how to play with each other. You know, uh, I, and I talk about our core. You know, we've got we've got three or four guys that, in our core that that's never played with other guys. You know, you got six seniors, five underclassmen, and we've kind of put it all together. And these guys are really gelled. They're playing well together. Um, what I like is how they look for the open guy and they keep moving the ball to somebody is open for the three and they take the shot. Uh, I've heard you say before, you know, if you're open, take the shot. That's right. That's right. We don't want to turn down a good one. Uh, our, our goal is to end every possession with a good shot, and you're exactly right. And it seems since postseason started that we've really uh, locked in and gotten better at, at making the next one. You know, we're turning down good shots to get great shots. Our guys are really whipping that ball around. and. You know, it's fun to watch. Uh, I got a lot of coaches, you know, they uh, this time of year you're swapping film and whatnot and you're talking and they all talk about how we move the ball and how fun we are to watch the play. And I tell them all the time, I agree, you know, we are fun, you know. Uh, I feel fortunate that I get to watch these guys play every night. You know, they've, uh, there's some nights that we'll make a play. We made a couple plays last night where, you know, uh, I can't believe you saw that guy or, you know, well, he did a great job of turning down a good shot to get the great, you know, I mean, or we'll make that, you know, he'll catch it and be open, but he sure realized this guy's really open, you know, just this unselfishness, man, and, and, and the willingness to sacrifice for, for the betterment of the team and the willingness not to worry about all the outside noise and just make the best basketball play possible, man. Yeah. And, and they are they are fun to watch. They, they've been a great group uh, thus far, and now we got to do what we're supposed to do. Uh, this group is built for postseason. Uh, this group has got a lot of experience of handling postseason, and uh, now we just got to go out and do our job. You know, I, it's uh, there's no magic out there. We don't have to trick anybody. We've got to go out and be us. And, By this time in do. the season, people have watched you enough. They know what you're going to do. They should. We're going to play man to man for for 32 minutes for full court. We're going to shoot a bunch of threes and, and 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 try to make good basketball plays. Yeah, that, you know, we are who we are, uh, and. The reason I say we're built for postseason because uh, we've seen our regular season schedule's getting us ready for it. We've seen we've had the kitchen sink thrown at us. Uh, we played methodical teams. We played wild teams. We played uh, strong teams. We played fast teams. We played long teams. We played small teams. You know, we've seen pretty much anything they can throw at us, and uh, and we've responded well to it. Uh, we've gained some experience from it, and now we just got to go. Be us, and uh, um, you know it's a uh, it's one of those things that is very uh, freeing. I think as a player to know that you know we're not having to put in a special play or we're not having to change defenses. I've got to do the same thing today that I did on November fifteenth at Madison Academy. And uh, well, let me ask you a really uh, uh, I don't know if it's strange or not. It's just a question. All right, I, I see you talking, and I see you hand signals, and they all turn in looking to see what to do. There's this little rectangular card that you pull out, and you look down at it, and you stick it back in your pocket, and then you do a sign, and I'm like, is that to help you remember yeah, what is. the play? I, I, all the time runs in my family. You guys know that. And uh, I don't know. Coach Kennedy did it at Ole Miss. Uh, uh, I've got it break down into sections. I get it broke down uh, into things I like for this particular game certain situations and it's just what's the, what's the old saying a short pencil is better than the longest memory <laughs> and uh, at that time of the game at that moment uh, I don't want to rely on my memory uh, so you uh, look I just, and I just you know to get back I, in the pocket exactly just it, it, it helps me to kind of keep my own task and uh, of course I've got I've got Kel Black the the photographic memory guy too <laughs> beside me He's always said, remember when we said this would work? Remember when we said we was going to try that? You know, he's, every time I go to the car, he has a, you know, he beats me to the punch most of the time. But, uh, but yeah, uh, it's just, yeah, it's it's kind of clever. You see it in football, you know, they've got them huge cards, yeah, you know, yeah. the office card. And then you got Mike Leach over there with an index card. <laughs> Stick, you know. His, and his work's just as good, you know. It's just, you know, I just like, I like to have mine collected. I like, you know, I know where, you know. 
Yeah. I've got mine on the list. I've got certain things highlighted, certain games, uh, things that we've seen on film that we think is going to be advantageous for us in that game. I mean, uh, and like I said, the shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. So a uh, typical practice, are you like calling out plays and see if they run them? The typically? I, I mean, mean, you just talk about fundamentals and conditioning. I know that. Yeah, I mean, this, of this time of year, we're trying to stay, you know, we're staying about an hour. Uh, like we won't run a single play the next two days. Uh, we work all on fundamentals and offense and defense and, you know, some team stuff. Uh, but uh, we, yeah, I mean, we'll have a period, a couple days before a game, when we start working on the actions. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, so, a, there's a local coach, I don't want to call him a name, but I don't put him in a bind. Uh, but uh, it's a guy I trust and really like. And he came he comes and watches us from time to time, and tries to get things. And we share a lot. And he said, uh, he said, for a game, and I'll let you play a game, and you guys run very little action. Me and me call, I call, say, yeah, we, I let them play for me. You know, we're going to play. We want, we want our guys. We try to create opportunities to create spacing or to create an angle. And we let our guys make plays, you know. But he said, for a group that hardly ever runs a play, your guys can run more plays than any team I've ever seen. I mean, when we do that dry run session and we, we put them on two ends and we're running them, I mean, uh, our guys are, you know. And, and part of it is we got six seniors that I've coached since in the seventh grade. I mean, we, we still run some plays that we ran when they was in the seventh grade. I mean, they've ran that play 5,000 times. I mean, how many times has Kobe Ticker run slice, you know I mean? Yeah. I mean, he can run it to sleep, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, but I try, we don't want to call, you know, we're not a team that likes to call a lot of set plays. We really want to use our athleticism, our five guards, everybody's ability to dribble, pass, and shoot, find the mismatch. We really want to play extremely fast. And and it's, you know, uh, if you, and you're going to get me in now, it's got 28 seconds at the clock's running. <laughs> if you have a lot of plays in, a lot of sets, well, I can, scout that as a coach, as an opposing coach, I can try to take away some of your actions. But when you run a motion-based offense or a, a uh, read-and-react offense, they can't scout it because we don't even know what's going to happen. You know, Our guys are making the best decision at that time. Yeah. And the reason we're so hard to guard is because the reality is, is that we don't know what the next pass is going to be. You know, We've got certain areas on the floor. We've got certain actions. If this happens, this happens. But we've got five guys on the floor that can all dribble pass or shoot, that's going to make the best decision for our basketball team. And that's why we're so fun to watch. Yeah. And that's why we're so hard to guard because we've got five guys that have surrendered to the team and are willing to make the right play. Yeah. And and when we're shooting it in, it's it's beautiful to watch and it's hard to guard. And, and that's why we've been successful. Well, you're going to miss it if you're not at Jacksonville State Monday night at 6.30, 7.30. Uh, to watch Plainview play Fultondale. Is that right? Correct. Fultondale. Uh, we appreciate you watching the Robbie Coker Show. Until next week, we hope we're back talking about a win and ready to move on to the next <laughs>Hello folks, this is Andy White down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City in Fort Payne, Alabama. I want to invite everybody to come out to our new location. We're at 1411 Glen Boulevard, right where you turn to go on Airport Road. We've got plenty of inventory for you to choose from. i got cars, trucks, vans, sport utility vehicles of any make and model. Come down here and visit us. Let us see what we can do for you. If you got some slow credit, I've got some banks that will take care of that. We've got great financing, got a great selection of cars. Y'all come down here and see us. Don't take the first deal that comes along when you can do better at BobbyLedbetter.com and Twin City Used Car Sales, located at 1411 Glen Boulevard in South Fort Payne.